Hey church family, welcome to RCC at Home. My name is Pastor Erica and I am out here at the Green Lake Conference Center today because next week, August 1st, is our annual family picnic out here. Here is everything you need to know. It starts at 10 a.m. We're gonna start with a time of worship. We're gonna have baptisms and then we're gonna celebrate together with a huge picnic. Here's what you need to bring. You need to bring some chairs to sit on, a picnic blanket, a dish for you and your family to share with everyone else, and also what you'd like to drink. We will provide the main course. This is something that we look forward to every year and you do not want to miss it. Second thing is, Pastor Danny is heading up this awesome canoe trip August 7th and 8th. This is not just for students, this is for families or individuals or anyone who wants to just go and have a lot of fun. If you want some more information or want to sign up, you can shoot Danny an email and he will give you everything that you need to know. Finally, if you are new here or tuning in for the first time, if you want to get connected with us and, and become a part of our church family, go online to rccsunday.com and fill out a red card. This is your way to communicate with us as a staff and also to be able to get signed up for Pastor Mike's weekly note. We are super excited that you are here and tuning in from wherever you're, you're listening in on today. Please enjoy Danny and his teaching. You know, as I was preparing for, for today, as I was preparing this sermon for you today, I came to realize, like, like I always knew this, right? I always knew this, but, but it like struck me even more. I am a really weird person. Like, like for real, hang in there with me. I am, I am ridiculously weird. Like, like look at this video. That was, was a Snapchat. I, I actually sent that to my friends as I was preparing for this sermon. Like, I was in my office. Look at this picture of my door. I blocked it off. I didn't want anyone to see me bouncing around in my office, but that's how I prepare for my sermon. If, if my community group is, is watching at home, there you go. This past week, we had community group, and, and the question was, what's an embarrassing moment of your life? I couldn't think anything. Community group, if you're watching... There's my embarrassing moment. But for real, like, I am really weird. And, and if you know me well, you can confirm this. But man, like, like growing up, me and my buddies, this was our thing. Like, like we were weird and we knew it and we just embraced it. We, we wore our weirdness as a badge of honor. And in fact, for me, I took it pretty far. Like, like I take most things in life really far like probably ask my wife seriously she will tell you i take things too far and it drives her crazy but but that's just me i take things pretty far and, and so an example for you of me taking something too far anything that that becomes super popular it's it's been something i've always done in the past i still do that with things today anything that becomes super popular i want nothing to do with. I know it's weird. It doesn't make sense. I want nothing to do with. I'll give you an example. Avocados. Avocados. You guys remember this like 10 years ago. Avocados, they hit the scene. It was a big deal. You could get avocado fries. You could put avocados on your burgers. You put them in your shakes. You could put them on your waffles. It was like everybody loves avocados. It was ridiculous. And when that happened, I was like, nope. Not me, not something that I want to be a part of. Avocados canceled, not happening. That's nonsense, isn't it? There, there was a period of time where, where avocados hit the scene and, and I wanted nothing to do with them. It doesn't make sense. It's nonsense. Now, now that's nonsense. And, and at the time, I knew it. I knew that it was nonsense, but it didn't matter. I was holding on to it 
Anyways, now, for you avocado lovers, let your defenses drop. If you've decided that you're canceling me because of my hatred for avocados, let me tell you this. Their popularity faded. Now maybe even it's just that they're more commonplace. And I tried them. And I love them. I love, I love cutting them in half, mashing them up, mixing them with some salsa chips and guac. I love them. I missed out on years of loving them because of this nonsense. And I've done that with so many things. Right now, hey dudes. Hey dudes, you know the shoes? Hey dudes, lame, not happening, not cool, way too popular, I want nothing to do with them. And I know that's, that's absolute nonsense. But, but we all have things somewhat similar to this that we, that we hold on to, don't we? Tell me this, tell me this. You're at home, think about it for yourself. What are some things that, that you know, like, like other people would say is nonsense, but you still hold on to them? Think about it for yourself. What are some things that other people say is nonsense, but, but you hold on to them anyways? I'll give you another example. For me, sunscreen. Sunscreen. Listen, I, I know sunscreen is good. It, it's important. It protects you from the sun sunscreen. I, I know my grandpa has skin cancer. I know that sunscreen is a thing. I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise, but here's my logic. They don't know. They don't know. They make the sunscreen and, and they test to make sure that whatever they put in there protects you from the sun, but do they actually see what else side effects happen? Now, it just so happens that, that uh, this week, my logic proved to, to actually play out, right? If you didn't know, this past week, Johnson & Johnson recalled a bunch of their sunscreen because a chemical in it had cancer-causing properties. Now, I, if you have your kids watching, kids, wear sunscreen if your parents tell you to wear a sunscreen. I'm not trying to tell you this is not medical advice, right? Like, don't take my word for medical advice, but 92.6% of the time, I'm not wearing sunscreen. That's just me. It's nonsense. And now here's the thing. I made those up on my own, right? I didn't, I didn't have people trying to convince me not to wear sunscreen. I didn't have people convince me, trying to tell me that I shouldn't eat avocados because they're popular. But, if you spend time on the internet, there are millions, tens of millions of things that you can read or watch that are, that are super convincing. People trying to convince you of all kinds of, of conspiracy theories, right? We've all heard of some of them, and, and for most of us, we're like, that's absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Now, I don't want to step on anyone's toes this morning or, or hurt their feelings, but flat earthers. Flat earthers. Have you heard of this? People that believe the earth is flat? If you've, if you've never heard of it, go on the internet. You will waste half of your day. People will try to convince you that the earth is flat. Think about it. It's nonsense. Fly up in a plane, open the window, you'll see the earth is curved. It's nonsense. How about this one? Really edgy here. I'm walking a really tight line here. Here's another one. Are you ready? The COVID vaccine. Did you, feel, did you feel anxiety well up in your chest? Lower your defenses. Take it easy. Lower your defenses. The COVID vaccine. Listen, if you go online, there are people that will try to convince you that the COVID vaccine is the, the wealthy people's attempt at population control. Nonsense. That's nonsense. Last one. Again, walking an edgy line. Take it easy. I remember when, when Obama was running for president, right? You're like, whoa, Pastor Danny, you're going you're gonna to hit the COVID vaccine and politics? I know. When, when Obama was running for president, 
Here was the nonsense. Here was the conspiracy theory that people tried to convince you of. Obama is the Antichrist. Really? Really, Obama is Satan? Say what you will about his political affiliations or his views, but Obama is Satan? Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Now, now here's the thing. These examples, right? They're, they're, they're silly. They're way out in left field. And if you believe them, I'm sorry. Shoot me an email. Call me. Come in. Have, let's have a chat. We can, we can talk back and forth. And maybe you can convince me of some of those. But the point of them was that they're, they're, they're funny, right? They're a little bit out there. It's, it's supposed to be obvious that they're nonsense. But what about the, the ones that affect your daily, right, your daily life? right? Like, like those, they don't affect the way that you treat people. They don't affect how you live. Whether or not I eat avocados or believe the earth is flat, that's not going to affect the way that, that I treat people or it's not going to affect my faith. So what about the ones that do? What about the ones that do affect our outlook? There, there are things that our culture tells us to be true that are absolute nonsense. And, and the thing is, these are the dangerous ones because these are the ones that, that change the way we live. These are the ones that, that change the way that we act, the, the way that we treat others and ourselves. You know, we're in this Colossians series, this, this series as we're going through the book of Colossians, and, and the whole point, right, it's cancel culture. Now, now cancel culture that, that we experience today is, is canceling someone, or, or an organization, or, or a business, right? But, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about canceling culture. Jesus canceled culture. Jesus canceled the culture of his time, and he's still canceling culture today. And, and that's the point of this whole series through the book of Colossians, is we are looking at how Paul's letter cancels the culture of his time, and cancels our culture today. So, our verses for today come from Colossians 2, 8. And, and if you have your Bibles with you at home or, or maybe on your phone, you can, you can open them up, you can pull them out and, and track with me. We're at Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. Now, before we dive into those verses, I want to remind you, two weeks ago, it is where we left off in our Colossians series, right? Last weekend was Celebration Sunday. We got to celebrate all that God is doing here in RCC. We shared a special, special communion together, and we heard an amazing faith story about how God captured a soul and set that soul on fire for him, and it was amazing. So two weeks ago, Pastor Mike, Colossians 2, he, he read the verses just before what we're going to read today. That's verses 1 through 2 in Colossians chapter 2. I'm sorry, 1 through 7 in Colossians chapter 2. And, and I want to do a brief recap so we understand what's happening here. This is a letter that Paul wrote to the, to the people of Colossae, the church of Colossae, and he had never met them. Think about that as we, we dive into these verses today. Paul had never met these people. And in those first verses of chapter 2, Paul, he, he tells them, he says, I, I've been agonizing over you. I've been agonizing. I've never met you, but I'm agonizing over you because I want you to know how badly he says, I want you to know how badly I want your community, I want your church to be knit together with love. He says he, he wants to make sure that, that the church of Colossae has a complete understanding of God's plan through Jesus. He says, I want you to have complete confidence in your understanding of God's plan through Jesus. He says, I, I, I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this, so that no one can tell you otherwise. I want you to have complete confidence so that no one 
can tell you otherwise. He says, let your roots grow down deep into him. Let your roots grow down deep into Jesus and build your lives upon him. That's what we've been talking about as student life over this past year, building your life on Jesus. Let your roots grow down deep into Jesus and build your life upon him then. Once you do that, then you will grow strong in understanding the truth. No one will be able to tell you otherwise when you build your life on Jesus. Then you will grow strong in understanding the truth and you will overflow with thankfulness. You will overflow with thankfulness. Doesn't that sound amazing? It sounds amazing. Doesn't that sound like something that you would want? When you let your roots grow down deep into Jesus, you overflow with thankfulness. And and this is where we pick up for today, verse 8, where Paul repeats himself. And and he repeats himself, it must obviously mean he's concerned, right? And so he starts in verse 8 and he says, Don't. Don't. He's pleading. He's agonizing. Don't. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies or or high-sounding nonsense that come from the human thinking, from, from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Verse 9, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ who is the head over every ruler and authority. This is this is profound. This is a profound set This is incredibly profound. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in human body. Pause. For in Christ. This is this is the 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 core of our faith, right? For in Christ, in Jesus, in the anointed one lives all the fullness of God in human body. Jesus is God. So, remember this from a couple weeks back? Mike emphasized this. So, always look when you're reading the Bible for so. So, therefore, because of this, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in human body, so that you also are complete through your union with Christ. You are complete through your union with Christ. You lack nothing. You lack nothing through your union with Christ. Because Christ is the head of every ruler and authority, you lack nothing. Man, let that sink in. That alone is counterculture, isn't it? Think about like like every stinking marketing scheme known to man. What does it revolve around? It revolves around our lack of having something, right? Think about it. Marketing tells us, you need this anti-aging cream. You deserve this new car. Life will be better if you had a bigger house. Life is more fun with more friends or drinking alcohol, traveling the world or whatever. That list, none none of those things are inherently bad. But they don't complete you. Having a significant other, a child, a nice home, a car, tons of friends, they don't complete you. They don't complete you. They don't complete you. They don't complete you. But that's what our culture tells us, isn't it? Our culture tells us so many things that just, they're they're simply not backed up in the Bible. At first glance, They may seem really, really good. They they may seem right. They may seem biblical. They may seem so legit, right? 
They sound biblical. They sound true. Like, like, like there's something that we should incorporate in our lives. They're, they're high sounding, right? That sound familiar? High sounding. Let me tell you this. That's their exact design. They're designed that way. The spiritual powers of this world tell us half truths. They're designed to, to have a, just a subtle difference. They, they tell us things that on the surface they sound so right, they sound so true. And subtly, just ever so subtly, they're not. They're not. They're not. Here's one. Here's one for you guys. I asked my community group and, and the staff to help me out with some ideas. And by the way, brief pause. If you aren't in a community group this summer, if you are not in a community group this summer, plan on joining one in the fall. Plan on joining one in the fall. They are so life-giving. They're so refreshing. This past week, our, our community group met for, for just a couple of hours, right? And, and we talked through this study. And, and oh, man, there's something special about sharing your life with people, right? Like, like to be able to just talk and grow with each other. It's, like, it's almost like it's in the Bible, right? Like we're supposed to, to do, we're supposed to have community, do life together? That sounds pretty biblical. Why don't you check, why don't you check your Bible? See if, see if that one lines up with scripture. But for real, like if you aren't in one this summer, plan on joining one in the fall. Just, just shoot Pastor Sam an email. He'll get you all set up. But for real, back to the, the subtle half-truths of our culture, right? At home. Have you heard this one? God will only give you what you can handle. God will never give you more than you can handle. Have you heard this? Have you heard this? God will never give you more than you can handle. It's false. I'm sorry, it's false. It's nonsense. It's not biblical. Jesus canceled that one. In fact, the Bible says the exact opposite, doesn't it? God wants us to rely on him, not our own strength. Philippians 4.13, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Through Christ who strengthens me. In our union with Christ, remember that from our verse for today? Through our union in Christ, we can do all things things. Not by our own self. This sentiment. God will never give you more than you can handle. Think about that for a moment. Where does that come from? It comes from this Western view of society, right? Like, think about it. Self-help. Pick yourselves up by the bootstraps. We can do anything that we set our mind to. If you name it, you can claim it. That's what our culture tells us, doesn't it? But if you live out that sentiment, think about the burden you're putting on yourself. That's, that, that puts it all on you. It puts it all on you. It's saying that you can handle everything that comes. That's exhausting. That is exhausting. And, it, and that doesn't sound like something that Jesus would say. That doesn't sound like, come to me all who are weary and heavy burden and I'll give you rest. It doesn't even sound like Jesus. But that's what our culture tells us, right? That's the, the subtle twist that our culture puts on it. Our culture tells us it's all about us. Our happiness derives from our own selves. Our happiness derives from our love for ourselves and we just need to do whatever makes us happy and forget everyone else. Listen 
to the verse from today, Colossians 2. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that that come from human thinking and the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Listen, we are bombarded day in and day out with constant empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense. We live in a culture that we, we, we don't live. We, we, we don't live in a culture that seeks to live their lives according to Christ. We live in a culture filled with human thinking and deceptive, subtle, deceptive ideas that come from the spiritual powers of this world. The goal the goal of the deceptive ideas is to, is to subtly, gently pull you away from Christ. God will never give you more than you can handle. That pulls you away from God. That pulls you away from God and toward yourself. Listen. As a Christian, it is pivotal. It is pivotal that you take stock of the sentiments and beliefs that you hold to be true and measure them based on the standard that God revealed through Christ. As a Christian, it is pivotal that you take stock of the sentiments and beliefs that you hold to be true and measure them based on the standard that God revealed to be true through Christ. What's your standard? What's your standard? What do you, how, how do you determine what is true? Does it, does, it, does it sound good, seem good, kind of play out in your life? Have you experienced it? Or do you measure truth by the standard in which God revealed through Christ? That is to say, Christ revealed all that is true about every aspect of Christ, but of life, I'm sorry, of life. Christ revealed all that is true about every aspect of life. Do you measure what you believe to be true based on what Christ revealed to be true? Or do you measure based on however you're feeling? As you go about your day today, here's what you need to do. The only way to know the truth that God revealed to us through Jesus, read your Bible. Super easy, right? We can all do it. Schedule a, schedule a tiny chunk of time every day. Read your Bible. In my home, we call it lock, block, and clock it. Read your Bible. This is, this is God's word. This is God's written way of communicating to us. And it's all here. All truth can be found in your Bible. Read your Bible. Second, be critical. Not in like a judgmental way, but, but when the catchy one-liners that you've always just assumed were true come across your plate, or, or when you are talking about faith and someone says something that, that's not a direct quote from the Bible, be critical. You don't have to argue with them. You don't have to judge them. Just, just take it for yourself. Go open your Bible and check what you are hearing with the truth that has been revealed to us in the Bible. Last, don't be a conduit. You know what a conduit is? They, they just pass things along, right? Don't just pass things along. It's super easy to do on, on social media, but don't do it. You see something on social media that, that makes you feel good about, about God or Jesus or the Bible? Go open your Bible. All comes back to the first one. Open your Bible and check it, right? Now, now, if it happens to be true, I have a challenge for you even. 
Instead of sharing it on Facebook, which is an amazing tool, we can share our faith on Facebook, social media, whatever, that's amazing. But even more amazing is sharing it face to face with someone. I challenge you to do that. How much better to share your faith to someone in person? But at the very least, if you must resort to sharing on Facebook, social media, whatever, check what you are sharing first with the Bible. So that, so that you aren't sharing the, the high-sounding nonsense that comes from the spiritual powers of this world and, and that pulls people away from their union with Christ. Now, if you're accepting my challenge, if you're going to do that today, pray along with me. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. It's a gift from you, and, and we're so grateful that, that you have put us in this time and space. But we know that your word calls us to action. And so, Lord, let us be people that eliminate high-sounding nonsense from our lives, that, that check all the catchy one-liners that make us feel good with your word so that we're not a conduit that, that helps people take a step away from you. Instead, Lord, help us to, to be people that draw others close to you. Lord, I, I pray that you give us the spiritual discernment, the eyes to see, the heart to know when things come across our plate, whether or not they are from you or from the enemy. And we trust that you will do this because we love you and we are complete through your son, Jesus, who in human body is full of you. And so it's in his name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Giving back to God with your finances is another way to worship. Did you enjoy the service today? All of the ministries here happen because of what is given through the offering each week. If you want to be a part of what God is doing here at RCC, all you have to do is go online to rccsunday.com and you can give there. It's an honor and a privilege to be on this mission with you.